Hey, what's up guys? This is TP-Link's Mesh Wi-Fi system, specifically Sodeco X60. Now I'm going to unbox this thing, I'm going to do some speed tests and different configurations. So I'm going to hook them up to each other via wireless and then via Ethernet so you guys can see the speed differences. I'm also going to do some range tests. Now this thing is designed to cover up to 5,000 square feet. My place is a lot smaller than that, but I will go outside and we'll see how far it gets. Now, this thing really varies based on your home, so not every place is going to get this much coverage because if you have a lot of walls or if there's other interference, obviously that's going to make this number a lot smaller. It does have the latest wireless standards, which is Wi-Fi 6 or Wireless AX, and yes, it's backwards compatible with previous wireless standards. Now, this thing has a few cool things. It basically has parental controls, not that everyone cares about that, but it also has antivirus. Now, if you're wondering, don't every router or every mesh Wi-Fi system come with this stuff? Well, some do and some don't. So, for instance, the Eero 6, it, while it's capable of it, you actually have to pay a subscription for it, whereas with this TP-Link, you do not. Now, if you're wondering what's the difference between a mesh Wi-Fi system and a standard router, well, mesh Wi-Fi basically connects two or more devices and they work kind of as a single unit to expand your wireless coverage. And if you have a wireless device, you pretty much don't need to switch between the two because it's still one network, one network name. So, you know, when you're going from this side of the house to the other side, it will switch for you automatically to give you the best possible coverage. Now let's open this up and jump right in. So I've had good experience with TP-Link and I got some requests to actually do TP-Link routers because that's something I haven't done. I use their switches, but I've had their routers in the past and they've been fine. So let's see. Okay, so router one, two Ethernet ports, power supply, nothing really on the bottom, just some air vents. And router number two, I'm assuming they're both routers and not access points. One of them has to be a router, but they both look like they are routers. Okay, so you get this cool. Hi there, welcome to the world of Deco. Superior mesh Wi-Fi for everyone. Okay, so you get the little light statuses, that's cool. Honestly, it's a well-packaged, very nice box. Uh, you get an Ethernet cable, Cat5e or Cat6. I can open it up if you guys are interested. I'm wondering if you get two. Does it say? It doesn't say if it's Cat 5 e or Cat 6 or Cat 7. So power cords look like this. They look kind of cool. I guess they made it thin so it could fit with another one, but it, it's kind of, you know, wide. But it looks like it won't bother the second plug. And yeah, it's 100 to 240 volts, so I guess it will work in pretty much everywhere. And obviously the same thing. And yeah, it looks like it's just one Ethernet cable from what I can tell. All right, let's set this up. All right, so a week has actually gone by since I've unboxed this thing, and the reason why I wanted to wait is, is to see if there were gonna be any hiccups, any drop connections, anything of that nature, and so far, so good. I also want to mention that the TP-Link app works very well. Very responsive, it's very user friendly, just in general, I think they did a really good job and it's worth a mention. If it's, it's one of the better mesh Wi-Fi apps or probably the best that I've used, so I just wanted to mention that. 
Now, before I get into the speed test and range test, I quickly want to go over a few things. So, number one, when I do speed test, my best possible speeds are around 480 megabits per second download and around 24 megabits per second upload. Those are typically my best speeds. Now, for the devices, I use the iPhone 12 Pro, which is a Wi-Fi 6 device or a wireless AX. And for a wireless AC, I use the Pixel 5 which is a Wi-Fi 5 device or a wireless AC. Now the differences between these during the speed test, I should say that when these are close to the mesh Wi-Fi, I typically get the same speeds, but the farther away you get, the iPhone usually does a little bit better because it has Wi-Fi 6. That's usually the differences. In terms of range test, the Wi-Fi 6 devices can go a little bit further. All right, so jumping into the speed test, I quickly want to say that I'm going to keep the different ways of connecting these very consistent in my naming scheme with how I did all my other mesh Wi-Fi videos. So you basically have three possible ways. Again, I'm going to keep it consistent. So I'm actually going to skip a number and that's why I'm letting you guys know in advance. Option number one is when you get one by itself. So just because it is mesh Wi-Fi doesn't actually mean you need to use more than one. You can actually just use one. So if you did get one, you'd basically hook up one to your modem, one of these ethernet ports. It doesn't matter because they're auto sensing. And the other ethernet port, you're free to use to either hook up to your computer or some other device. Or if you need more ethernet ports, you would basically hook up the other one to an unmanaged switch and that would expand your ethernet ports. Now, doing speed tests with this, when you get close to this with both devices, it doesn't matter, you pretty much get full speeds. We're gonna skip option number two. The reason why is because these both appear to be routers. Uh, option number two is when I usually get a router and, or, and an access point. So, so therefore, we're gonna skip option number two. Now, we're gonna go into option number three is where you get two routers and you hook them up to each other via ethernet which is called wired backhaul or ethernet backhaul no matter which configuration you're in when you're hooked up to the main one the main one that's hooked up via ethernet to your modem when you bring your device like your iPhone for instance and you come close to this and you do speed tests you're always going to get full speeds at least with my internet connection I get full speeds the reason is because this is hooked up ethernet to your modem now, all my numbers that I'm going to tell you are going to be with the secondary one uh, that's hooked up to your router. It's not hooked up directly to your modem. Okay, so when you do a wired backhaul and you do a speed test on the secondary one, you still get full speeds with both devices, which is what I would expect. Option four is when you get two routers and you hook them up to each other wirelessly. So again, one of them is hooked up to your modem via Ethernet. The second one is one or two rooms away and is wirelessly connected to this guy. And the second one, again, is acting as an access point. Now, when I did speed test with the second one, uh, when I was closer to the second one, I actually got really good speeds and I was surprised because this is a dual band system. But the speeds I got were around 310 down, 22 up, with the wireless AC device a little bit slower than that. Now, why is this surprising? Well, this is a dual band system. What's the difference between a dual band and a tri band system, you ask? Well, a dual band system has two bands it has a 2.4 gigahertz band and a 5 gigahertz band. A tri band system has three bands a 2.4 gigahertz band and two 5 gigahertz bands. So it has an additional 5 gigahertz band. Well, what's the advantage of having an additional 5 gigahertz band? Well, the advantage is when you hook up two mesh Wi-Fi, two routers to each other, you basically get a dedicated wireless backhaul. So typically you get a dedicated band just for the connection between these, which typically results in very good speeds. With the dual band, you don't have that dedicated band. So uh, you're your wireless connection between these are still being shared with all your other devices that are connected. So you typically don't get those full speeds. And I should also mention the other advantage of a tri-band versus a dual band is a tri-band also allows more connections, more wireless devices to be connected to it, 
without the speed slowing down as much because every time a wireless device connects to your mesh Wi-Fi system it's actually sharing the speed with all the other wireless devices uh, so with the tri-band again you have an additional band so you actually have more bandwidth to take on more wireless devices granted you're still limited by your modem speeds if you're trying to get internet speeds you're still limited by the speeds of your modem so that may or may not make a difference uh, but yeah so those are the speed tests uh, again very good speed test for a dual band system very surprised by it uh, I was expecting it to be lower the other question that I get uh, before I jump into race test the other question that I get is okay if you hook these up in option 4 wirelessly can you use the ethernet ports on the secondary one and the answer is yes you can so when these were hooked up to each other wirelessly I actually connected one of these ethernet ports to my Xbox Series X I did a speed test and I pretty much after three speed tests the average speed was 460 down and 22 up which is almost maxing out uh, what I got so very very impressive speeds for a dual band system very impressed by it range test time now before I get into the range test I quickly want to say that range varies by location if you have a lot of walls that's gonna hurt your range if you have a lot of wireless interference that's gonna hurt your range now I'm testing in a place where there are a lot of walls and there's a lot of wireless interference if I take the same mesh Wi-Fi system uh, as an example to my parents place they can go much farther uh, and get really good speeds much farther away but I'm doing the, this test where I do all my tests with all my other mesh Wi-Fi's to keep it consistent uh, but again range varies so just because I'm getting a certain range doesn't mean you're going to get it or if you're wondering hey my old 10 year old router gets me 200 feet of range easily well if your 10 year old router is getting that most likely this is going to get you much more than that okay so at 20 feet 6.1 meters away I pretty much got full speeds at 50 feet 15.2 meters speeds were cut by a little more than half I want to say because my place is smaller I actually went outside and closed the front door and that's where I'm 15.2 meters away at 60 feet 18.3 meters away speeds were really getting very very low and at 70 feet 21.3 meters that was pretty much the extent of it so final thoughts what do I think of this thing honestly for the price it's really really good the reason why is you get really good speeds especially for dual band you get really good range you get an easy to use app so very pleased with this thing and obviously has the latest Wi-Fi 6 now I can't speak to its longevity because I've only had it for a week but just in general really happy with this thing now if you guys did enjoy this video please like and subscribe I have a whole bunch of other tech videos coming out in fact I just got the TP-Link Deco X90 so I'm gonna do an unboxing and speed test with this I'll also compare this to that to see like this actually costs a lot more and this is a tri-band router so I expect better speeds and range with that but yeah I'll do a video with that as well so hit the notification bell as well so you guys will know when that video is posted as always if you guys have any questions or comments please leave in the comment section below I do try my best to answer them I'll also leave product links in the description below as well thank you guys for watching and thank you to all my current subscribers